Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the GTX 680 Super Overclock graphics card and it's like nothing I've ever seen. Even though in 2012 the 680 was one of the best gaming cards you could buy, Gigabyte decided that it still needed a little extra spice. Unlike the traditional side mounted fan seen on pretty much every other non-passive GPU in existence, this behemoth features 5 top mounted 40mm industrial server grade propellers as part of a design known as Windforce 5X. I've chosen the word propellers for a reason you'll later discover. Now I've spoken about the existence of this card in the past in a video titled Graphics Cards You Can't Buy and shown you a few standard 680 benchmarks alongside it but thanks to the power of eBay I finally got the chance to own one of these very uncommon variants in a move that once again contradicts my assumption of the unavailability of certain hardware. Looking at the design a little more and while I'm pretty sure you'd agree it isn't the coolest looking thing in the world those top mounted fans make quick work of withdrawing warm air that would otherwise get trapped by the solid metal backplate. It seems to me like it would work best without the side panel of your PC case on, considering that the extracted air will be blasted straight at it when the card is mounted on your motherboard. I still like the design though, and in the modern world of mostly bland looking video cards, the Super Overclock 680 would certainly still be a conversation starter. This beastie triple slot design is backed up by what were some very beefy specs too, so it would have been the one to buy if you wanted the best. Saying that though, and of course you'd have to have been quick, because whilst this isn't the rarest GPU we've ever looked at, it's still very uncommon. The first thing I did before benching it or cleaning it up for that matter was to test to see if it worked. At risk of ripping the PCIe slot out of the motherboard, I connected this weighty mammoth up, switched on the system and got immediately deafened by what sounded like a CH-47 Chinook helicopter taking off inside my PC case. After confirming it displayed a picture and that the drivers installed without causing any system crashes, I took it back outside to remove the heatsink and blow away some of that dust. Although it didn't initially look too dirty, I knew that a 5 fan graphics card couldn't possibly go 6 years dirt free and I treated it to some new thermal compound too. I'm still in awe at the size of this lad, what an absolute unit. I also discovered this little extreme button too during the cleaning process which allows you to switch the BIOS of the card and tinker with the clock speeds without worry of bricking it. We won't be doing that today though as it's already factory overclocked and I don't want to break what is apparently a pretty scarce GPU. With the cleanup done it was time for reinstallation. Here's a little snippet of how it sounds now. It's not actually that loud at idle at all, and it still stays lovely and cool at 35 degrees. We'll be lucky if I can say the same during load conditions though, and with that, it's time to get into some games. First up we have a new game on the list, a frequently requested title by the name of Rainbow Six Siege. While I haven't had a chance to play any of the game itself yet, I have had plenty of experience with the in-game benchmark tool. To gauge an accurate idea of performance I ran the test 5 times and worked out the average of the 5 runs to come up with the final figures. I ran the tool at 1080p resolution with 100% render scale and used the medium settings with anti-aliasing off. This card has 2 gigs of memory so any higher than medium and we would exceed the VRAM limit. You'll also notice that when paired with a Ryzen 5 1600 the GPU will be running at 100% or close to it throughout all of today's titles meaning it is operating at maximum performance. The results here are very respectable and the game still looks fairly decent too. Those close numbers that make up the 1% and 0.1% lows mean that there was no stutter during the 5 runs so we're off to a very good start. Next up it's Assassin's Creed Origins. Even after an hour of gameplay I noticed the card never exceeded 50% fan speed in MSI Afterburner. That's pretty good especially when you look at the temperature in the top left corner but this doesn't mean the card didn't get loud. It's definitely audible. Performance wise AC Origins is probably one of the most demanding games on today's lineup averaging just 40 frames per second. 
There were also a few dips here and there, though after about 15 minutes of gameplay it sort of smoothed itself out. I ran the game on medium, and whilst the average figures could be improved by the low or very low presets, the stutters were still present, and I found this to be the case with other older Kepler, as well as Fermi Nvidia cards too. The Crew 2 was up next an open world racing game that lets you travel around the entire USA by either land, sea or air. It saved me a fortune in airline tickets. £40 and I can explore America from my sofa. It's not that graphically impressive, but it can be quite difficult to run for older cards. The 680 SoC did a pretty good job of maintaining a solid frame rate, almost achieving 60 at medium settings, though falling ever so slightly short. Again, there was a little bit of stutter, but this mostly occurred during switching between vehicles, and in some instances, the quick switch between car and boat actually caused my vehicle to become invisible. I don't think this is a game glitch, as it's happened with a 560 Ti in the past as well, so it seems to be certain older GPU architectures that cause this problem. There were no problems with Overwatch though, this was actually a pretty simple and straightforward test. The game auto selected the high preset, and I decided to just go with it. In return I saw 115 frames per second on average with very little or practically non-existent stutter throughout. The performance results will depend on the map, but you'll be averaging at least 90 FPS no matter what map you play on I would imagine. At least this was the case on the four different ones I tested out. Temperature wise you won't really see this card exceed 70 degrees. So we'll continue with our theme of 1080p medium settings as we move on to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, an open world battle royale title that runs pretty well now on a wide variety of hardware. I had the 60fps target in mind throughout most of today's testing, but didn't have to make any major in-game adjustments to any of today's games to achieve that. Let's not forget that the 680 was once one of the best, and even after 6 years it should still do okay in a lot of releases. There will be some instances where this isn't the case as I'll demonstrate later, but during my 40 minutes of PUBG playtime, I had a pretty good experience. Gameplay wise, not so much. I suck at this, but performance wise, I was very happy with what I saw. Witcher 3 is a few years old now, but will still put a lot of hardware through its paces, especially when turning the settings up. I selected, you guessed it, the medium settings once again for both the graphical options and the post-processing options and did about 45 minutes worth of exploring, some of which was through densely populated areas and some was through pretty sparse swampland. Remember the footage I show you is only ever a snippet of a much longer gameplay period, but the figures are based on the entirety of the playtime, so they are a far more accurate representation of performance. Next up and how could I benchmark a GPU without testing Fortnite? It should be obvious how well it will run, but with the popularity of this game still on the increase it's always worth checking out, especially if you plan on getting an older and cheaper card to play it. I'm sure we could have opted for high settings but playing it safe and going for medium meant a nice 90fps average with 1% lows of 70 and a 0.1% low of 61. You won't have any trouble here with a super overclock 680, or a standard 680 for that matter. With the amount of time I spend benchmarking this you'd think I'd be a higher level by now, but yeah, online multiplayer games aren't really my strong suit. Give me GTA San Andreas over modern games any day of the week. Finally, it's Wolfenstein 2. This is where I'd like to point out the aforementioned performance issues comment. I know that some games warn against stutter if you exceed the VRAM limits, but honestly I've never seen it this bad. At low settings and 1080p, though resolution didn't really matter in this case, all seemed well until we tried to move. Doing so saw huge performance dips and meant this one was unplayable with this card. For the grand finale I decided to try and see how loud this thing could really get. While it won't exceed 50% under most circumstances, I decided to crank the fan speed all the way up, equip my military grade headphones and warn the neighbours before clicking apply. Yeah, it's a pretty loud card. So, there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the GTX 680 Superclocked Edition Retrospective and Benchmark Test. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I really do enjoy testing out these older and rarer cards. And it's nice to see them pop up on eBay every so often. And I'm actually honestly surprised that I won yet another pretty uncommon card um, just by bidding in the auction. So such sites are always a great place to look if you want to find something similar yourselves. As for this video though, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know if you've ever owned one of these super overclock 680s. And as always, I hope to see you all in the next video.